Well, I mean, you can still see the power of the water and the whitecaps here on Shoal Creek, right under the 9th Street Bridge. The fire is still moving. You can see the cloud of smoke of that fire. And I want to show you what that looks like if we move the camera closer to the street. On top of this car, and check this out, there is still a dent. Snapchat is an app where you can send pictures or video to people. And when it's open, it's deleted. They came from right here, right near where Spells was hiding, where his friend, a photographer, sat crouched hiding from the shooter. These are pretty big signs. You see someone using a cell phone, they'll follow that car and make sure the cop on the side of the road. If you go over here, they have a couple other monitors set up for how they're monitoring this express lane section. They had a system where it could flip a switch and make all the lights green from Trinity to West Avenue on 6th Street, combining together because the entrance ramp on to Mopac is closed as well. But this is where it happened behind me. You can see the guardrail. That's where he hit it in the front of the trail. But if people leave what they take in, these don't do any good. <laughs> There's plenty to show. Look at him laughing. This teenager was full of life. Look at him just grinning like big old cheesy grin. But now, He's gone. Life is different. Life is different. 18 year old Elijah Hernandez died last October. His mom and sister Taylor still hold on to his memory. How he died remains a mystery. We have an end result. I have a dead son. We and we don't know and we don't know why. Hernandez died after wrestling with a friend who the family says had him in a chokehold. But his death certificate says manner of death undetermined. So he just dropped dead while they out were of wrestling. nowhere while they were wrestling. That doesn't is, make sense. Is all the answers we have. But a video could give this family closure. Friends say they recorded the last seconds of Hernandez's life and posted it to my story on the app Snapchat. That's evidence police say they can't get. What did they say? There's no way. We can't recover the video. A Snapchat is an app where you can send pictures or video to people. And when it's open, it's deleted. But if you send it to my story, then people can watch it as much as they want for 24 hours. If we had that, it would, would be of great help. It would be a really great help. But police didn't check the friend's phones that night, and the friend deleted the video. Why weren't the phones picked up that night? Um, initially, we just thought we were dealing with an accidental death. Police found it days later and sent a search warrant to Snapchat. Here is what they got back. Lines of dates and numbers of Snap messages sent from the phone, but no video. Police said Snapchat told them they don't keep videos and they don't have a server to store them. It's very frustrating for law enforcement because this is not a problem that is unique to just this case. There are times when deletion means deletion. The company has not responded to our questions, but a privacy expert at UT said companies like Snapchat delete videos fully to compete in the online marketplace. And one of the criteria that uh, they may want to employ is look at the level of security we provide. Unless new evidence comes out, the DA's office says it will not file any charges, and police say it's still a mystery. That's the really heartbreaking part, I have to say, for the family, is that we may never know what happened. Yeah, let me try and find a funny one. The family, though, <laughs> won't accept that. If I'm going to be missing my brother for the rest of my life, I want to know why. That's it. In San Marcos, Adam Hammonds, KITV News. On a wet morning just before 7, police set off on this commandeered bus. Okay, got a blue Ford F-250 or F-150. The mission, to catch people on their cell phones. He had it in his right hand. Three officers here, and then 16 on the road, working together. She's coming up to you right now. She's got the rack on the back. She's passing you right now, Kyle. This white Mazda CX-7. She's steadily talking to it, left-hander left ear. Now she's already, she just put it down. They use the bus because of the vantage point. Once they see someone using a cell phone, they'll follow that car and make sure the cop on the side of the road gets the right car. So there's no mistaking on which vehicle it was. They're looking for anyone with a phone in hand. She's steadily texting with her right hand by the steering wheel. Texting or just using GPS, and they're not hiding, but drivers aren't either. But they're so engrossed in that, in that phone or that electronic device, they have no idea we're even right there looking at them. In two hours, they issued 21 citations on I-35 during the morning rush hour, even one to a trucker. Police say they do this because cell phones have become a major cause for crashes. And anything we can do to help prevent that, you know, it's going to be safer for our roads. 
So police say, put down your phone, no matter if there's a cop, bus. Okay, yeah, it's her right behind that white pickup. Or neither around you. In Austin, Adam Hammonds, KON TV News. There's one room filled inside the shelter. It's got food, a bathroom, and everything Dupree needs. Yes, this is his dedicated room. Yes, he's a tabby cat. And Scott Anderson is very glad he's here. We just didn't know as fire rolled through right through that section if he was going to have gotten taken with it or not. Anderson and his wife weren't home when the fire hit and never knew until yesterday their house or Dupree would be there. We still weren't sure until we pulled in the driveway and saw it standing because every home on the path was pretty much gone. All his neighbor's homes burned. It was very much a sense of relief. I, I guess, but with, with sadness at the same time. But Saturday, good news. So things are going good and they're going safely. The fire stalled and that area will be open when this meeting is over tonight. People going home, plus no new homes burned, which even in the devastation, helicopter pilots noticed. You see homes that have been preserved right in the middle of that. So the firefighters here have done an awesome job. But these bags may still be needed because the fire is still going, leaving Dupree here and Anderson aching to take him home. Right now we're, we have a room with the quality in and we're just kind of living minute to minute at the moment and uh, just waiting for information and hoping to get in there.